In this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to use the replay editor, and I'm gonna walk you through three basic filming styles. Filming a line with a fisheye lens, filming a long lens shot, and a single trick fisheye shot. We're gonna start with a single trick fisheye shot. So first, press select to get into the replay editor after you do your trick. If you're on PlayStation, you're gonna press this giant center pad right here. Or you can press start, and then go to replay editor, and then go to show editor. Now that we're in here, we're gonna find the starting of our clip by going back, holding the left trigger. Any second my character should pop up here because he fell over the ledge. I want to start my clip about here so I'm going to hold the right bumper and then I'm going to push the left thumbstick in. That is going to say your in point and to scrub forward you just hold the right trigger and I think I want my clip to end here. So I'm going to hold the right bumper and then I'm going to push the right stick in this time and that is going to set the end point. Now that we have this clip isolated we can hold the right bumper and then press triangle or Y. And now my entire timeline is just that clip that in and out point which makes setting key frames a lot easier. There's different types of cameras we can use. So we can use orbit camera, free camera, tripod, game, and filmer. For right now, we want free cam. So we can use the left stick to move the camera anywhere we want. The right stick is gonna rotate the camera. Up on the D-pad is gonna raise the camera up. And down on the D-pad is gonna lower the camera down. Right here is roughly where my filmer is gonna be. So I'm gonna leave the camera here. To hide this UI, you just press triangle or Y. To bring it back, you press that again. So this is gonna be a fisheye shot. Now there's two different ways you can have fisheye. One way to get a fisheye effect is to change the field of view. So we're gonna press left or right on the D-pad until we get to field of view keyframe. Then hold right bumper and then press down on the d-pad to set a keyframe now the bigger this number is the more field of view you're gonna have so like the wider angle and the lower this number is the less field of view you're gonna have that's more for long lens shots the game's default field of view is 100 so going to about 120 to 130 is a pretty good fish high so we're gonna go to 120 and even though we just set the keyframe it looks like we didn't do anything at all that's because you have to be in montage view so right now it's off we're gonna push the left bumper and then it turns on there we go we got our field of view look and if you want to get rid of a keyframe all you do is just hold right bumper while you're on the keyframe and then press up on the d-pad the other way to get fisheye is to pause the game go to camera and then go to camera lenses and you can change it to fisheye wide or fisheye fisheye is just going to be a 4-3 fisheye like this fisheye wide is going to be what it says fisheye but wide and this is the one that we're going to use now we're ready to set the camera keyframe so press left or right on the d-pad to get to camera keyframe set up your camera anywhere you want the filmer to be so my filmer is going to be roughly about here and then i'm going to set my first keyframe frame right bumper and then down on the d-pad now as he comes in i'm gonna have the camera like go in a little bit more so right about here is where i want to quickly move the camera back down and tilt up just so we can keep the skater in the frame and then at this point right here we want to start bringing the camera in more towards him maybe keep that down angle set the keyframe and then as he starts approaching the ground right about here you want to have the camera tilted more on the ground have him on the right side of the frame and then set a keyframe i think right about here is actually where i want it to like quickly come in so i'm gonna start with my camera guy angled all the way back here and then set this keyframe roughly the same by just deleting it going back to this previous one and then setting it there so it stays there and then it kind of comes in boom like that jumping between the keyframes is very easy you just hold the right bumper and then push left or right on the d-pad you can jump to any keyframe you want and we can scrub through as slow as we want by holding the trigger very slightly instead of all the way down you can just like hold it very lightly i'm gonna add a little bit of camera tilt so we hold right bumper and then we can use the triggers to actually rotate the camera this way and like just tilt it so we can give it a little bit more personality if i was filming this in real life i think my wrist would be slightly tilted that way so we got a little bit of tilting going on tilt comes back boom now not all camera guys are like as steady as this like some of them have a little bit of shake we can add the shake so left or right on the d-pad until you get to camera shake set a keyframe and then i like doing roughly 10 maybe 20 sometimes if the guy's really having a bad day you can set it to 100 we're gonna have it on a 20 and have them like shaking a little bit so now let's see how this looks a little bit more life here now this kickflip goes by really really quickly i want to slow it down but i don't want to do it with my triggers i want to do it with keyframes so again left and right on the d-pad until you get to play rate so go to the point where you want your slow motion to start for me i want my slow motion to start roughly about here so right bumper down on the d-pad and then we're going to set this keyframe to one and then i'm going to fast forward to a about here where I want it to start picking up speed again. So we're gonna set another keyframe and then set it to one. And then right in the middle, smack dab in the middle, we're gonna set a keyframe and then we're gonna lower this number. So the lower this number, the slower it's gonna be. If you want it to actually speed up and you want it to go faster, you can set it to a two. And then when you get here, 
it goes a lot faster. I guess that's good if you want to fast forward through a line, but for this one, we want to set it to two. Two is my favorite. So we're going to watch it with the keyframes on screen, slow down, ramp into two, and then ramp back out to full speed. If you don't want it to slowly get to the two and you want it to like instantly cut to like slow motion, hold right bumper. And then if you push left bumper, you can actually change what kind of keyframes you use. We got smooth keyframes, which are these ones right here, the green ones. We have linear keyframes, which are going to be yellow ones. And then we have constant keyframes, which are going to be white ones. Right now I have a constant keyframe set in the middle. So what it's going to do is it's first going to ramp up to the two and then it's going to stay at a two until it hits this point right here. So as soon as it hits this constant keyframe, it's going to stay a two all the way until it hits this one and then speed back up. But since this keyframe before it is a smooth keyframe, it's going to smoothly transition to this one right here. If I had them set all at constant keyframes, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to be like a hard kind of cut right to the slow motion to kind of like a harder cut to slow motion and then cuts back. And then same goes with linear. It's going to be like a like a more jump kind of cut. I recommend keeping it on smooth unless you really need to hard cut to something. And then there we go. We got our first clip with fisheye ready to go. It's got slow-mo in it. We can add a filter to this whole thing if you go to camera lenses. So we can set a blue filter, green filter, sepia, black and white. We'll choose a black and white one right now. So we'll just set a keyframe and then we can set how black and white it's going to be. So if we want just a little bit, set it to like 20. If you want a lot, we're just going to go with a lot max. And we can have it fade back into like color if we want. So if we just go here and then set it to zero. So now it's going to fade into color from black and white. We can do this with any other filter. And we can also set the time of day within this clip. So if I set a keyframe, we'll set one for here. We'll have the time of day maybe change. When I get to this point right here, we'll have it like set to dark and then we'll have it go back to like daytime or something when I land. I don't know. You can just mess around with this however you want and just make your clip look however you want. Now that you have your clip, you're ready to save it. So all you do is just press start while you're in the replay editor and then go to save replay. This should pop up and you can name it whatever you want. So kick flip, backside tail. And then you're done. Now this does not save as a video file. It saves within the game. So on PC, you're going to need a recording program like Game Bar or OBS, Shadow Play, whatever records your screen. And if you're on PlayStation or Xbox, you're going to use their recording features. So start recording and then go to your clip and then just watch it through while it records. That way you can actually get a video file and then stop the recording whenever you want. Now there's something you need to know about saving and loading your clips. They save within the map that they were saved in. So when I go to load replay right now, you can see disco flip nose blunt and kick flip back tail. Those are the two things that I filmed within San Francisco map. If I go to somewhere like Philly, enter replay editor, pause the game, go to load replay. Those clips aren't there. So we got 50-50 to 50-50 and then real 50-50 to 50-50. But my kickflip back tail is not there. So I have to go back to the San Francisco map. Replay editor, load, and then there we go. We got the kickflip back tail. We can go and load it. And then we have everything that we did. So we have the montage view. We have like all the changes that we made. So that's how you go back to your clip. Now, before I move on to long lens filming, I want to show you a really cool feature. So I'm going to turn off the montage view. And you can see right here that I have my camera path, exactly what my camera was doing at every moment. So we can watch the camera the entire time throw every keyframe and see exactly what it was doing, what angle it was at. And the way that you do this is you go to the pause menu, go to camera and then go to camera path display mode and turn it to full path. If you turn it off, it's going to be gone. You're not going to see that camera anymore. So you're definitely going to want to have this turned on if you want to visualize what you're doing. All right, moving on to long lens shots. So I have an interesting trick for filming long lens stuff. So I'm going to imagine my filmer is standing right here. I'm in free camera right now to set up where I want it to be. But let's go to tripod, tripod, tripod camera. And now it's like I have a tripod that's set up right here. So it's going to follow my skater without me doing anything. It's going to keep the skater in the center of the frame. This is how we're going to set our keyframes. I'm going to set my first keyframe at the start right here, right bumper down on the D-pad. And while holding right bumper, hit play. And then this is how I'm going to set all my keyframes. So I'm just going to set keyframes as it goes, just to keep it all in the center of the frame. And we can delete all these after we're going to actually like just manually override all these keyframes. But what we want to do is we just want to keep it center of the frame the entire time. So now that we have the basic keyframe set, we're going to go to field of view and set a field of view. So since we're very, very, very far away, I'm going to set this to about 10, maybe maybe five. We'll, we'll start at a five. Just so this clip isn't blurry the entire time I'm editing, I'm just going to set a depth of field one for about, I don't know, 3000, something around there. So we're going to go back to the camera keyframes and then we're going to alter each individual keyframe that we set. 
that. So I think the first one I wanted to be like a little bit higher up, more on his face. Now this is where I'm gonna start to zoom out actually. So I'm gonna go to field of view, set another one, and we're gonna boost this maybe up to 10. So it's gonna have like a little zoom out effect right there, but it's still gonna keep the skater in the frame. And right there, it starts to go up. So we want to go to this keyframe and we wanna lower this so we can actually see and have the skater in the frame the whole time. So this is what it looks like so far. We got the first clip right there and then we got the second one and we got to zoom out a little bit more. So by this point right here, I think I want to add another, maybe five to it. We'll add a five. So check to see if our reframing was good. I think it looks pretty good. And we want to keep zooming out as he comes closer to our camera. And now for the fakey lip, we got to decide if I want the entire character in the frame or if I just want the board. And I think I might just want the board in the frame, especially for the landing right here. And then I'm going, to frame him up near the end when he stops. Actually, I think this point right here, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna change the field of view. We're gonna keep it, I don't know, maybe at an eight. And then I just gotta reframe exactly how I want it. Now, right about here, he starts to get blurry. So we're gonna have to set some keyframes for depth of field so that he stays in focus the entire time. So I think at this point, I'm gonna set a keyframe for, I don't know, we'll call it 700. Now we watch, we watch and make sure it stays in focus. There we go, that's, that's good. And since our filmer is not a steady hand, we're gonna add some camera shake. I don't know, let's see how 15 looks. Oh my God, this is, this is, oh, you know what? It's not so bad. Once it actually starts moving, it's pretty good. And then we keep it going, fakey lip. Boom. And you don't have to set this many keyframes either. Like usually the less keyframes you use, the better it is. So for example, like this keyframe, like that's not even needed there. Same with this keyframe, like it's not really needed. However, if you think it is needed and you want to bring it back, you hold right bumper and then press circle and it'll bring everything back. It'll undo. Or if you want to redo, you hold right bumper and then press square. So instead of using the tripod method, you can always set this manually too. Like you can just like center them yourself instead of having to like do it that way first. I just do it this way because like it keeps everything in perfect time so that like it's not all jumpy and it keeps the skater in the frame the entire time so it really helps save time i'm going to quickly explain depth of field to you guys i'm going to use this tech deck for an example so the lower the number the closer your subject has to be to the camera because that's where the focus point is the more that you raise that number the further back away from the camera your focus goes so like if i keep moving farther back eventually everything back here is gonna be back in focus. So we're a little bit further away from our subject, which means that we have to raise this number up until he becomes in focus. So that's gonna take a little while and it should be roughly here. So now Tommy is in focus, but the background is still blurry. And if we were to move closer, he's no longer in focus because that focus point actually moved with the camera. And when we move back, he becomes in that focus spotlight. Think of it like a spotlight. You kind of just move in the spotlight around. So if we start raising this number all the way up, our focus point is going to be more on the back now. So everything close to the camera is blurry. Everything further back is not. It's in focus. I don't know why I did this, but you guys now have to live with this in your nightmares. All right, moving on to filming a line. And I have my clip all ready to go. And this line happens to be a historical challenge. So just like filming long lens, I do have a trick for filming lines. We're not gonna be using free cam, we're gonna be using the orbit camera. So what this does is it actually follows the skater and you can actually orbit around the skater. You can set it as far back as you want, but you're always gonna orbit around and it's gonna follow. So I'm gonna get my fisheye lens so we know how close I can be to the skater the entire time. So I'm gonna set my first keyframe. It's not actually gonna start looking like this, but for now it is. And this method is the perfect way to keep the speed consistent with the filmer so that you're always like in the right spot at the right time without having to uh, like speed up or slow down the camera. So we're just gonna set all the rough keyframes based on like what tricks we're doing. So right here, we're doing the nollie back heel. I wanna be roughly here, maybe be on this side by the time he gets here. Now we're getting to the stairs part here and I kind of wanna slow down. So I'm gonna actually press square and we're gonna go to free cam for this one. I want to start slowing down here. So roughly here is where I wanna like like almost be completely stopped. And then as he goes down the set, I wanna start slowly going forwards too. And there's another trick after this right here, the ollie up. I'll show you hard cut camera angles in a little bit. But now let's see the rough draft of what we just filmed. So like the entire time, the camera is gonna like stay perfectly, oh, moved a little bit too fast there. So just delete a keyframe. There we go, it's gonna stay perfectly in time with the skater. Now we just gotta go back and adjust all those now that we have the timing perfect. 
So what I was saying at the start, I don't want my clip to start like that. I wanted to start from like this, like something like this, and then have it like pan up to the skater. And actually maybe this first clip will be on the other side of the board. So up here. Okay, so the first part is done. We got our angles right and we just gotta lower the camera just a little bit when it gets to this point so we can still see the landing. So this nollie back heel, I wanna rotate sort of with them, but not as fast. And then make sure the landing is in frame. We got the nollie back heel. It's all in frame. A little bit too close there. So we're gonna set a keyframe a little tiny bit further, an extra one. And the rest after this aren't too bad. We're gonna have to edit it right about here though. I just don't like how it goes up a little bit. And I kind of want it to go down more at the end. So like that. Add a little bit of camera shake to this thing. So we'll add 20 since he's moving. And I think right here when the skater pushes, I'm gonna add a little bit of extra camera shake because the filmer is gonna be pushing too. Set a normal keyframe and then we're gonna have it like shake quite a bit when he pushes between here. So I'm gonna do the same method as uh, I do for slow-mo, just set both the exact same. So this one's set to 20 and this one's set to 20. And then right in the middle when he pushes, I'm gonna add maybe a, a 50 so it goes quickly. So it's like, there we go. You see that little bump? It's like my, my camera guy is pushing to try to keep up. Maybe we'll do it again right here because they're starting to speed up between here and here maybe. That's when uh, more camera shake is gonna happen because they're starting to like pick up a lot more speed. So that's pretty much the basics of filming a line and just like keeping everything in perfect time, adding some style, some camera movement, making sure like the camera guy's not jumping too fast forward or lagging too far behind. But now that we got that, we wanna do a hard cut right here. So like, what if we got here, but we didn't wanna use this camera angle right there? So like for this trick right here, we wanted like a fisheye over the stairs and follow to the other set. Well, doing something like that is gonna be super easy, barely an inconvenience. So we just get rid of all these keyframes. Now at this last keyframe where you wanna start your alternate angle, change your keyframe type to constant keyframe and then try to go one frame over if you can and now you can either do a linear key or you can do a constant key so this one we're just going to do linear but we're going to set it up down here instead and from this point on we can start setting smooth keyframes again so we can set a smooth keyframe we're going to have to follow this dude so we're going to have to set some keyframes until we get up to this point right here and then he's going to ollie up and we're going to stop here so this is what the hard cut's going to look like we got two angles now going. So this is how your clip is gonna look. You're gonna have your line section that you filmed before, but as soon as you get close to the stairs, you're gonna hard cut right to the next camera angle as if there was a filmer right there to take on the last two tricks. And if you set the keyframe that's after this one right here, so like the one that's one frame over, if you set it to smooth keyframes, you're gonna have uh, a little bit of issues here. It's gonna like kind of go like this and like freak out a little bit right now. And if you set a constant keyframe, it's gonna stay at that first position until it hits the second keyframe. So I suggest using linear because this is gonna give you a nice smooth transition as if the filmer was waiting at the bottom of the stairs. And then if we want, we can add some slow-mo here too. So why not? Let's just throw that in here. So play rate one, when he lands, I want it to be full speed. And then we'll set this to a nice, lovely two. Oh, that sound. Now there's one more way you can film and this doesn't use any keyframes. We're gonna use filmer mode. So I'm gonna click in the left stick and we are now in filmer mode. So while we're in here, you can't actually scroll through your clip. This all has to be filmed in one shot. By pressing square, we can actually change what lens we're using. So right now we're using fisheye wide. Right now we're just using fisheye. So you can circle through what lens you're using for this shot. So like maybe we'll just use this one right now. First, you need to know the controls. So like we're not gonna look at the skater at all, if we press right trigger, it's gonna look right at the skater. And if we lightly press it, it'll slowly go and look at the skater. Holding the left trigger is gonna follow the skater. So even if I have my camera set like this and we're gonna hit record, it's gonna follow the skater. If I let go, it's not gonna follow the skater anymore. And you can't rewind or fast forward or anything. And what sucks about this is it doesn't remember where you left off. So you have to always go back to where you set up the first time. If you need to zoom in, it's right bumper. If you need to zoom out, it's left bumper. You move the camera, you do all that stuff. All right, so what we have to do now is we wanna film this Ollie over the Gons Gap, which is a historical challenge. This mode is a little bit hard to use. So you're gonna have to like take a while to get used to how it works. But like something like this, like we're just gonna lock onto the skater and just film it really badly and if you want to see what you just did all you do is just go to filmer and we can actually see what we just recorded in this mode so that's everything we were 
Damn. This is everything that was recorded in the film mode. And you can't edit this afterwards. Like it, it's a one take one shot thing. Like you can still set something like time of day if you want. You can you can set keyframes like that, but you can't set any camera movements. If you wanted to film a line like this, you just hold left trigger and then you can follow the skater and you can move your camera as you need to. Maybe just stick to keyframes unless you want to go really hardcore with this. Like this is actually how I used to film in the old builds. But that is how to use filmer mode. All right, so that is gonna do it for this video. Hopefully the tutorial helped you out. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments and I will try my best to answer them. So I will catch you in the next video.